Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook with Randy Martinson, Martinson Ag, and it was ugly down day in both corn and livestock futures trade. And Randy, risk off across the ag complex. And where did most of that pressure come from? Is it still this dollar going so much higher? Well, I think that's part of it. I mean, you know, the dollar has been strong all week. I think it's sitting up at, uh, you know, year highs. So I think that added a little bit of pressure. We still are getting some exports, though, reported as soybeans had a sale today. We've been seeing a couple of corn earlier in the week. But overall, I think it's got to do with the stronger dollar. It's got to do with the, you know, improving weather conditions. You know, the Southern Plains picking up rain, Corn Belt picking up rain, uh, South America seeing good conditions. But I also think it has got some concerns with uh, what the administration or what could happen with those with tariffs and with the biofuels industry. Yeah, I was going to say, do you think the market's just getting back to reality now and facing the ideas of tariffs, a possible trade war, that sort of thing? I, I think they are. I mean, I think they were worried about it to begin with, but now that we're getting a little closer and we're starting to hear some of the appointments that are taking place, or, or at least some of the nominees for some of the appointment uh, positions, I think a little bit more realism or reality is starting to set in, and it's making the market a little bit nervous. The biofuels industry, I think, is a little concerned as well here about the EPA administrator, and the bean oil market has certainly reflected that, hasn't it? It has, you know, bean oil seen some spillover selling from the palm oil market also topping out and kind of seeing some pressure. But I think a lot of it's got to deal with what's going on with the, the possibility of the renewable fuel standard. You know, we did see earlier in, you know, where we were expecting that uh, the administration would stop importing the used restaurant oil and or cooking oil. And that was supportive to start with. But now we're starting to think that maybe there could be a little bit of trimming of the renewable fuel standard and the biofuels industry. And I think that's adding some pressure. Like you said, we saw six and a half million metric tons of soybeans to unknown destinations announced this morning and on the export front. But is the market disappointed that we haven't seen more sales? There's been so many rumors about more China business. I think they have been. I mean, it's actually been kind of slow seeing, you know, the sales coming for soybeans. Corn's been a little bit easier to get the sales to Mexico and unknown, but we haven't had many soybean sales being announced, at least on the flash uh, uh, reporting system. So, and rumor is, or while looking at it, we have the cheapest beans in the world right now. So, and we have the advantage over South America until January. Now's the time we need to be selling that. Otherwise we'll lose that advantage. Yeah, you mentioned we don't have really um, any weather problems in the U.S. or South America. And that was kind of reflected with Conab raising their production estimates for Brazil this morning, right? Yeah, exactly. They raised it, you know, a little bit from their uh, last month or their previous report and quite a bit above last year. So at this point, yeah, there is no threat and planting has caught up to normal or at least a little bit ahead of their average pace. So they're getting the crop planted in a timely manner. So that is going to take a lot of the concerns about production away too. So we did see technical selling pressure pretty much across the grain complex. So let's talk a little bit about support areas. We took out a couple of key ones in both corn and soybeans here today and ended up well on the lows of the day, didn't we? We did. You know, we took out that December 425 was kind of the support line for corn. And we took that out pretty easy here today, uh, trading down in that 420 in sub area. You know, so it's going to take a little bit to get back on there. Now that opens it up to the possibility of a test of four dollars. Soybeans took out the $10 level in the January. November went off the board at 985. Those are some key areas to watch. So it looks like soybeans could see a little bit of pressure. And right now, wheat, all three exchanges are, you know, within a nickel or close to a nickel of contract lows. And soybeans, uh, you said January closing below $10, not good. But we also are hitting new contract lows in the soybean meal market. So where do you find support there? You know, right now, I mean, yeah, we broke through that, you know, that 290 area. I would look for this thing probably to find some support around 275. Hopefully we can see this market slow down there. But the trouble is that it's not just the meal going down, you know, but it, as you mentioned earlier, oil is too. So we're kind of seeing the whole complex kind of erode. So the wheat market has been seeing most of its pressure from the improved weather and ratings. That's been part of it. Uh, you know, we definitely have been seeing good rains down in the Southern Plains. The, the crop has improved 3% last week. They're expecting to see another improvement this week. But also, I think some of that pressure is coming from the potential of the war ending in Ukraine and Russia. And that would help then 
free up Ukraine to be able to start shipping a little bit uh, more robust. So you said we're down at contract lows on wheat. Do you think they're going to hold? I'd like to think they're going to hold. I mean, you know, fall conditions are not indicative of what's going to happen in the spring, but we are going in with a very good rated crop close to where we were last year. So I think the, the, at this point, I want this market to hold those lows, but if corn and soybeans continue to drift, it's going to take wheat with it. Cattle market uh, did not have the best day either. I think we're holding the lows from Monday at least, but another down day here. And do you think that's because of the weakness and the cash and the cutouts? Well, I think that's part of it. I mean, you know, cash has been kind of king here as of late. And with that starting to drift, it's pulling the market down a little bit. I do think that part of it came from a little bit higher than expected uh, CPI numbers and PPI numbers this morning. So and the lower stock market, that kind of also helped to push the cattle markets. And I think the combination put some pressure in on the on the live cattle market spilling over into the feeder cattle. Yeah, I know, though, you have told me you think that the cattle market um, is at least holding support here because the stock market is still up towards record highs. You've got lower interest rates, that sort of thing. Yeah, I think that's helping to give support to the market. But I, I mean, at some point, you know, we're now starting, if we start to see the dollar slip or, or we start to see the stock market come under some pressure, uh, that could bring this market down again. And right now, seasonally, we start to see it drift a little bit at this time of year. That's right. The seasonals are going against us there. What about the hog market? We scored new contract highs on Tuesday and we've been consolidating under those levels. So is this market about ready to roll over? You know, I think it's getting close to that. I mean, again, just like we're seeing in the cattle seasonally, we see the, the hogs come under some pressure this time frame. But I also think that market is really worried about uh, some po the potential of tariffs coming into play, uh, especially on exports, as you know, we depend on exports in that market. And China is a big player of that. Yeah. Cash and cutout values, though, especially the cutouts are starting to roll over here as well. And the cutouts seemingly, as well as the cash had Contra seasonally been kind of holding up that market here for a while, hadn't it? It had been, you know, and now we're starting to see, like you mentioned, that start to turn a little bit. So that's adding a little pressure into the market. Yeah. And the key will be, did the funds start liquidating that record long position that they have? And it's likely as we go into the holiday season, you know, we'll start to see some of that happen as they look to rebalance their portfolios and readjust as they go to the year end. All right. Thanks so much. Randy Martinson with Martinson Ag. That is Markets Now.